Democrats out crazy themselves in response to Texas Governor Greg Abbott's defiance of the Supreme Court, and even one of their own is shouting about their delusion as he makes a credible effort to take the White House from Joe Biden. Hello, I'm Mike Huckabee with your January 25th edition of The Breakdown. A quick reminder to subscribe to the channel below. Be sure to click the notification bell if you haven't already, and also click the like button if you enjoy the video, and I'm sure you will. I recently warned in my newsletter at MikeHuckabee.com that by deciding against Texas 5-4 to four, and with a lawless president who refuses to do his constitutional duty to secure the border, the Supreme Court might be foolishly laying the groundwork for a soft, best-case scenario, civil war. The SCOTUS ruling that Biden had the power to order Texas to remove the razor wire barrier that the state National Guard put up to hold back the massive invasion of illegal aliens that Joe Biden's administration, quite frankly, caused. I also reported that Texas responded to the SCOTUS ruling by putting up more razor wire. Since then, the crisis has rapidly escalated. Texas Governor Greg Abbott said, The federal government has broken the compact between the United States and the states because it's refusing to do its constitutional duty to protect the states and enforce immigration laws. For the benefit of any SCOTUS justices who aren't that familiar with the Constitution, hey, one of them doesn't even know what a woman is, Governor Abbott cited Article 4, Section 4, which says the federal government shall protect each state against invasion, and Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3, which says the states have a sovereign interest in protecting their borders. Governor Abbott went on that the failure of the Biden administration to fulfill the duties imposed by Article 4, Section 4 has triggered Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3, which reserves to the state the right of self-defense. For these reasons, I've already declared an invasion under Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3 to invoke Texas's constitutional authority to defend and protect itself. That authority is the supreme law of the land and supersedes any federal statutes to the contrary. The Texas National Guard, the Texas Department of Public Safety, and other Texas personnel are acting on that authority, as well as state law, to secure the Texas border, end quote. Now, it's important to note that Governor Abbott is not violating the law, as the media might suggest. The SCOTUS ruling simply gives the federal government permission to cut the barbed wire Texas is set up. It did not rule on whether or not Texas could set up the wire in the first place. So what happens next? Will Joe Biden try to enforce his open border by threatening Texas with F-16s? By the way, the Texas Air National Guard, they have some of those too. Matt Bespa at townhall.com nominated as the most insane response that of Texas Democrat Representative Joaquin Castro, who urged Joe Biden to federalize the Texas National Guard and order them to do his bidding. In doing so, he also repeated the lie that Texas was responsible for the recent drownings of three illegal immigrants, which has been thoroughly debunked. Several congressional Democrats are echoing this call, which would only escalate things even further. Besides, it's no certainty that Texans would side with Biden against their own state, and officials from other states who are sick of Joe Biden's willful dereliction of duty are voicing solidarity with Texas. I asked one of my staffers, who's a born, raised, dyed-in-the-wool Texan, what he thinks of Castro's suggestion. His response, and I quote, I never could stand this arrogant leftist jerk, and the idea that he represents the great Lone Star State sickens me. If he'd been at the Alamo, He not only would have leapt at the offer to run away, he would have run straight to Santa Ana to rat on the Texicans. He should be kicked out of office and the state of Texas with a pointy-toed boot, along with anyone who'd vote to reelect his traitorous rear end, end quote. Well, I think that kind of sums up the general attitude in Texas, among the Texas people anyway. As predicted, some are already creating history-inspired flags with a razor wire fence and the taunt, come and take it. And peaceful rallies supporting Texas's right to defend itself from invasion are already gearing up. I suspect that if anyone is going to climb down and cool off this rapidly rising confrontation, it's going to have to be the Biden White House. Unless they really want to risk dividing the nation 
or even attacking American citizens in the name of defending Joe Biden's right to not do his sworn duty of securing America's border. In the midst of all of this, Minnesota Representative Dean Phillips, the one Democrat who's dared to challenge Biden for the presidency, and is doing remarkably well, having polled over 20% of the vote in the New Hampshire primary. He's running against Biden from the left on some issues and the right on some others. And in one case, he's just challenging Joe Biden from the standpoint of common sense and basic human decency. Having zero positive accomplishments to run on, Biden has made his entire re-election campaign all about demonizing Donald Trump and his supporters, painting about 72 million Trump voters and taxpaying American citizens as being racist, extremist, terrorist, fascist, enemies of democracy. But Phillips, I'm sure, shocked Biden's sycophants on CNN because here's what he told him. He said, my party is completely delusional right now. Phillips did something that none of Trump's critics will do. He actually attended a Trump rally and met some MAGA voters. I saw the line of people waiting in the cold for hours. And I thought, what the heck? You know, I'm going to be a leader who actually invites people, doesn't condemn them. Met probably 50 Trump people waiting in line. Every single one of them, thoughtful, hospitable, friendly. All of them so frustrated that they feel nobody's listening to them but Donald Trump. A diverse crowd, people who had never been to a Trump event before. My party is completely delusional right now. And somebody had to wake us up. And if that's my job, so be it. Phillips believes that his party would do a lot better if it listened to the concerns of working Americans and showed them some respect instead of demonizing them. But good luck with that. They not only won't attend a Trump rally, their house pet media outlets won't even air his speeches. They really think that if they cover their eyes and ears, they can make reality go away. It's a basic tenet of modern leftism. They've now pitched the hermeneutically sealed echo chamber stage. I kind of wish they'd cover their mouths as well. I do hope that in November, Trump's victory will leave them as shocked and traumatized as it did in 2016 when they also never saw it coming because they absolutely refused to look. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel and be sure to click the notification bell below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget, tune in tomorrow at 1.30 Central for the Live with Mike live stream. We'll cover more of the week's news and answer a bunch of your questions live. And if you want more of my news analysis and commentary, sign up for my newsletter at MikeHuckabee.com. It's totally free. That's going to do it for this edition of The Breakdown. I'm Mike Huckabee.